we're not talking about luxuries today. Uh, what we're going to share over the next few minutes, we're talking necessities. I want you to see this. I felt it was so important. Now, I don't feel like a lot of things I say are that important. I felt like this was so important, we need to put it on the screen. But we need a generation of godly men who understand the importance of being an influential godly father. Because the fact of the matter is this. You can produce a family that does not make you a father. You can be married, but that does not make you a husband. And you can be a male, but that does not make you a man. And I want to say, especially to the dads today, uh, we live our lives. If we lead in, in our homes to influence our children, if we influence our, our marriage and influence our lives, it's going to not only affect us, it's going to affect the generations beyond us. But I, I, I use the word influence, but really for me, it's this word impact. Uh, because if you're going to impact your children, you've got to be willing to touch them. I mean, you've got to be willing to get involved in their life. So uh, I gave the, mom four, the moms four ways uh, to be a godly mother. Uh, so today, uh, we're going to give the dads two more. Okay, so we gave the dads four already. We're, we're going to add to your collection. So two more things, two things of being a godly, influential father. Number one, you have to develop and maintain a relationship. See, here's the mistake that a lot of dads make. I see a lot of fathers doing this. Um, they have this idea that somehow love equals influence. And, and, and they'll say this. But I love them. I actually, I, I even told them one time. <laughs> um, love does not equal influence. And you know what? We could also move love and say gifts equal influence. And, and by the way, hear this. Now, it's been a long time since I've been in youth ministry, but I believe this is still true. They'll accept your gifts, but they want you. Now, listen. They'll take the car, and they'll take the clothes, and all the other stuff. But they really would prefer you, all right? It's not true to say that love equals influence. Now, before you go, well, I don't agree with that. Well, look at this other formula. Love plus time equals relationship. So you got to put the time in. you got to put the time in. Now, a lot of men are great at putting the time in at work. A lot of men are great at putting the time in in the gym. A lot of men are great at putting the time in with their hobbies or their interests. But guys, I'm, I'm just speaking with you. you got to put the time in with your children as well. You cannot have a relationship that is an influential relationship unless you're spending time with your kids. And the mistake I see a lot of fathers making, right, is especially when you have younger children. So for all of you who have younger children in the room, right, we, a lot of dads go, well, that's mom's responsibility. And, and maybe that was something that was mirrored to you, uh, but I would say that's not necessarily something that is biblical for you. Right, and, and many of you saw, well, mom took care of the home, mom took care of the kids when they were little, and then dad didn't, didn't step in until they were older. And here's what I would say, that dads a lot of times only want to be with their children when they share the same hobby or the same interest as dad. And basically, the dad wants to be with the children when the children engage with him, a conversation that they're comfortable with or maybe that they enjoy. Now, this is going to be controversial, so let me say it. It's not your kid's job to enter your world. It's your job to enter their world. And their world may look different than your world, meaning their interests and their hobbies may not be yours. And instead of trying to force them to do what you like, maybe find out what they like. Again, there, there's a great video going around, and uh, they ask five questions to both parents. Five questions to the mom, five questions to the dad. By the way, exact same questions. And these questions, uh, you do not have to have a degree to figure out. The questions go like this. What is your child's favorite color? 
that dad has no clue. Uh, what, is your, what is your child's favorite food? What is your child's favorite movie? I mean, just five basic questions. And at the very end, finally, there's one guy. We're going to give it up. There's this one guy, and he gets all five right. And, but he puts the shame the other guy. And guys, you have to get engaged in their world. You have to build and then develop and maintain a relationship. Number two, we're going to be finished. Second, parenting, especially fathering, must be done in a righteous way. So number one, there has to be a relationship. But number two, you got to do it in a right or righteous way. Fatherhood must be done in a way where we recognize our responsibility as the parent. We're not a peer. We're the parent. Can't be peers. Now listen, I have two adult children. It is a beautiful thing when there comes a day and they buy their lunch. It is awesome. It's an amazing thing when you go to play golf and they actually pick up your greens fee. Like, that is a beautiful day. But you have to understand, that day doesn't happen while they're a toddler or in elementary school or middle school or high school. Like, you got to wait for that day. you got to put your time in. But that day, just to give you some hope, it does come. But in the meantime, you have to be the one to be the parent. And then humbly accept the fact and acknowledge that even in that, you're not perfect. Like none of us are perfect parents. And so that way, uh, the way that that's going to play out for you is this. When you're calling your children, uh, when, you, when you're calling your family to live out the word of God, and maybe there's a, a moment, maybe there's a scenario where you didn't do that. Like it's important for you, obviously, to confess to God, to confess to your spouse. But this is a hard thing to do. But to confess to your kids and say, hey, listen, um, you know, guys, uh, mom and I love each other. Uh, there's no one I would rather be with than mom. But I said something to mom. Yeah, I shouldn't have said that. And uh, I lost my temper, or I got angry, or uh, I wanted to be right, I wanted my way. And, and I said, you don't realize what that will do for your children. That's not being weak, right? That's being meek. And meek means that's you being mighty and showing them that when you read the Bible, when you come to church, and you hear, it's not just something that you check a box, but like, this is real for you. And that you're truly trying to live the Word of God out. And you're trying to do that. Uh, I, I love to tell the story. I don't love to tell the story. But I think it's good for me to share with you. Uh, that I have, in the course of my parenting, uh, I have snapped a phone in half. Uh, and I have snapped an iPad. Uh, my youngest son, we will not share his name. It's the one that starts with a Z, though. Um, <laughs> His aunt had purchased some clothes for him for his birthday, and, and she lives in another state, and so we were together for just a brief moment, and, and, and so she'd bought him some clothes and said, hey, I, you know, but I'd really like to make sure you try them on just to make sure they fit, and he's on his, uh, you, you know, his iPad and not really paying attention, not really being involved in the game, and, uh, and we're like, Zeke, you, you got to try on the clothes, man. Like, your aunt's getting ready to leave. She just wants to make sure they fit. She spent money, and she'd like to know that you can actually wear the clothes. And he's not engaged at all. And so finally, with one hand holding the iPad and the other hand trying to put on some shorts, he says, are you happy? And I asked for the iPad. I snapped it in half. And I just want to tell you, uh, not pleased with what I did, but the words that came out of my mouth next, top three things I've ever said, even from the stage. I said, oh, I'm happy now. Um, <laughs> Now, uh, you need to know that my wife didn't look very happy uh, because she said, you know, you got to buy him another one. I said, yeah, yeah. I figured that. Uh, but in that moment, it felt really good. But then I had to go to him and say, you know what? Uh, even though I was upset with your actions, uh, the way I acted didn't make it right. right? Like that, those are growing moments for you as a father but it's also a growing moment for your children. It's, it's important that you show them that you just don't say this, that you actually live this.